In September 1944, the 12th Manitoba Dragoons freed Ostend, Belgium. Now the Canadian unit is the guest of the city in a fete held to commemorate the liberation. A ceremony at the war memorial sees a wreath placed on it by the Dragoons' commanding officer. Parading through the port on their way to the town square, the troopers receive the plaudits of a friendly crowd. In Canada Square, medals are presented to the first men to enter Ostend. The burgomaster tells of their daring deeds which helped free the city. A grateful people present battle colors which will forever be treasured by the liberators of Ostend. Sports of every description are helping Johnny Canuck in Holland file away the time until the long-awaited day of rehabilitation. In the holiday land of Groningen, the hours speed quickly by as the lads keep the old muscles in trim with their chosen game. In case you feel like a little canter, the Maroon Hunt Club offers a string of 24 oak burners from which you may choose your favorite. Taken over from a departed Wehrmacht, glossy coated roans provide a grand workout for the lads of 5th Div. The ex-cavalrymen of units like the Lord Strathcona Horse are in their element as the boots and saddles call is sounded again. For them, it's like old time. But for the rookie riders, it'll be eating chow at the stand easy tonight. For those who prefer less strenuous activity, sailing the blue waters of Tatersvulde is the last word in summer amusement. What could be better than a picnic on the water, especially in company with fair Dutch cousins? Across the border in Germany, second divisional engineers hold a regatta on a lake which might be in Muskoka. A brainchild of the sappers, the crab race utilizes rubber life rafts borrowed from the Air Force. From high board and low board, the diving demons of second div show how to hit the water with a minimum of displacement. They hope. Walking through minefields from Normandy to Germany was good practice for the greasy pole, and here you land in one piece. The spectators enjoy the water jousting contest. If anyone happens to get drowned in the scrap, he is immediately disqualified. Another unique type of game which requires plenty of muscle is the pontoon race, equipment which bridged many a Holland Canal is used in the sport. So life goes merrily on as D-Mob Day rapidly approaches. Something new has been added in the way of unit shoulder flashes. It is that of the civilian concert party. Several of these groups of entertainers arrive in the United Kingdom en route to Canadian camps in Europe. In Canada, they have been entertaining servicemen and workers in industrial war plants. Sponsored by various commercial organizations, they don battle dress at Aldershot in preparation for their tour of the continent. They are well equipped to provide some keen entertainment for Johnny Canuck. Flash, General Creerar mounts the saluting base in Amersfoort, Holland, on an historic occasion for the Royal Montreal Regiment. It is the presentation to the reformed regiment of its new battle colors. Originally a unit of 1st Canadian Division, the RMRs later became split up into many groups for various tasks. One company distinguished itself in the fight for the Leopold Canal in the drive through Belgium. The remainder were used as reinforcements for the Armoured Corps. Now they are all together again. As a battalion, they will carry their colors proudly into the war against Japan. Flash, Lieutenant General Fuchs and Prince Bernhardt arrive at Wageningen for a ceremony commemorating the German army's surrender in Holland. The Netherlands Prince inspects the Guard of Honor, and thousands of Hollanders listen to addresses by the Canadian commander and their prince. 
Outside the building where the surrender conferences took place and the final agreement was signed by General Folks and General Blaskovitz, a plaque is unveiled. Presented to the town burgomaster, the plaque marks the historic spot where a once mighty Germany was forced to bow to superior allied might. In Toronto, plans are drawn up to alleviate the bad traffic congestion experienced in downtown areas. Transit times will be considerably reduced and Young Street rush hour traffic snarls will be eliminated when the new system gets into operation. The Toronto Transportation Commission have employed the best brains in America to design a subway and open cut line railway. The plans of the $51 million project are now complete. Among the consultants is the engineer who designed the Chicago subway network. At an exhibition conducted by the City Planning Commission and the TTC, Torontonians see a model of their future means of rapid transit. The Commission proposes to spread the construction over a 10-year period. Approximately 3,000 men will be employed. Maximum speed and safety will follow the elimination of streetcar tracks from downtown streets, which are in many cases quite narrow. Thus, the Queen City keeps pace with other Canadian centres in designing for post-war expansion. Paris, the Royal Canadian Navy show, which took London by storm, plays to capacity audiences. Many celebrities are in attendance on the opening night. Canada's ambassador to France, General and Mrs. Vanier, Jack Benny, the famous comedian, and Nino Martini, opera singer, join the crowds of service people. Following the performance, the company takes time out to see Paris at first hand. All the famous spots read about in books are visited. In Montmartre, a typical member of the Bohemian Quarter plies his trade. Montmartre's famous church of Sacré-Cœur is given the once-over. A famous nightclub, the Moulin Rouge, fascinates the entertainers. No trip through the French capital would be complete without a look at the Notre Dame Cathedral. Girls being girls, the popular place is in the Place Vendôme. A Coty perfume store yields a plentiful supply of that precious fluid. In the Tuyeri Gardens, nautical knowledge is tested in a rare display of model boats. After a hot July day in a crowded city, what could be better than a dip? In the swanky racing club of France Pool in the Bois de Boulogne, Canadian Navy troopers mingle with native Parisians in the joys of a swim. At the Paris airport, French money is exchanged for Belgian currency as the company is ready to push off for its next engagement in Brussels. During the show in the Belgian capital, offers of film contracts are made by visiting movie executives. United Nations troops flock to the performances. Thus, Canada is well represented in Europe by her showtime ambassadors of Meet the Navy. packing time for the lads of the 2nd Canadian Division. The last fighting Canadian div to leave Germany is ready to move to Western Holland on its way home. Carrying their rations with them, they lose no time in getting the movement underway. Leaving the naval barracks at Aurich, Germany, the great migration commences. There are no regrets in leaving the conquered country behind as the convoy heads for the frontiers of friendly Holland. The way back is a far pleasanter journey than the eastward trip, which took second div through Holland into Germany. Pleasanter still will be the voyage across the Atlantic, homeward bound.